So, um, <laughs> so I started, I was, yeah, well, there's a, he and I have a very long and interesting history there. Um, <laughs> but I got so into this that I, I learned the uh, entrance poem to his, to the book. And the book is, well, this will tell you what the book is about. <laughs> Namaste, traveler. Come sit by the fire with the techno pagan octopus messiah. <laughs> Chosen by the powers that burn. Willing to teach if you're willing to learn. You want the whole story from the beginning? I said, do you want the whole story from the beginning? Yeah! yeah! It's a long one filled with dreams, crystals, and women. But don't let me stray from the point, which is when I was 12, I dreamed of the pyramids where I found a crystal the color of good. And that was the most vivid dream of my childhood. But life's most dreams, I put it aside, got into biology, the study of life, which says that the ultimate nut is the gene, describes the flesh perfect. Don't touch on the dream. Then I fell into love, picked up a pen, bought a computer, put sites on the web, on the side studying octopus and what, the, like, went to the island to work with the kids, on the side studying octopus and squids, because. Octopus man, they're smarter than cats. Most smartest invertebrate, most people don't know that. Communicate by color and posture, believe. Wear what they're thinking on their eight sleeves, which if you think about it, sounds like telepathy. Could this be the next totem of humanity? Hmm. Now dig, I was born one Ian Muir Wynn, named after the naturalist, John Muir, heard of him? And the company I work for is called Naturalist at Large. We were out on the islands with kids working hard, Put kids into wetsuits in seas of bright green. A rubber pedophile fetishist's wet dream. <laughs> <laughs> Teaching uh, marine and native um, uh, biology. Earth mother native American side philosophy. But something inside me, damn it, felt empty. And that's when I discovered dimethyltryptamine. <laughs> <laughs> I got a by the name of McKenna. Author, professor, psychonaut, you betcha. Well, by, by degree, he's what's called an ethnopharmacologist, but if you ask him himself, he'll say he's an alchemist. Turn me on to this drug, DMT. Jokingly called it three dimensional spirituality. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been to college and I've done my drugs. The worst ones were TV and keg beer and mugs. Tried acid, tried mushrooms, tried pure ecstasy. I hit the base pipe and smoked more than my share of weed. I even did heroin once accidentally, but nothing prepared me for dimethyltryptamine. Now, DMT is the hardest black market substance to find because it comes from a rare South American vine, which with, or with great difficulty can be synthesized, and it stimulates the pineal gland, the third eye. Now, Descartes called the pineal the seat of the soul between the two halves of the brain, I've been told, and the pineal gland appears, no deception, at 49 days after conception, inside the developing fetus's head, and in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, 49 days is the time that it takes for a dead person's soul to reincarnate. <laughs> now you're beginning to see what I mean when I say, watch out for dimethyltryptamine. <laughs> no one knows more about DMT than this man, McKenna, and it must have been destiny that the very next day it was offered to me by a woman I've never before or since seen. Now, when a spaceship lands in your fucking backyard, <laughs> you got a choice, and that choice is damn hard. You get on the ship and go for the ride and run back to your house and lock yourself inside. <laughs> they promise to bring you right back with ease with the crux of the issue is you have to leave. But if that ship left without me, man, I'd never forgive myself. My life would be empty and some kind of other else. <laughs> <laughs> so I laid myself down on that woman's couch and I put the evil base pipe in my mouth and act as the taste is foul like smoking plastic. <laughs> And the act is ugly, sucking the glass dick. <laughs> Got to a membrane after the third hit, took one more, and busted right through it. Sped through the wormhole to the land in between. Came out of the pyramids, just like my dream, only above me flighted a huge UFO. Uh, uh, no, uh, yeah, something. <laughs> Filled with the gods of heaven and earth. Only recognized Shiva, the one I saw first, and... The gods, it was like they expected something from me, and I felt like a guest with no gift at a birthday party. So reaching back to my voice, and I dropped to one astral knee and said, how do we reconcile, reconcile wilderness with technology? <laughs> Without hesitation, the gods answered me by slamming my mind with a tidal wave of beauty. Oh, and the colors, man, it was awesome. Fractal unfolding, crystalline lotuses blossoming, 
Like the pixels that make images on the TV, these mandalas constitute all that we dream. At their center is light, the color of good. No one could describe it. I wish that I could. And I woke up on that couch and took a deep breath and said, man, I sure feel better about death. <laughs> so now, just like that, I went back to my life, went back to the woman who would be my wife, but the seeds of destiny had already been sown, and you know what they say, you can never go home. Started hanging out with my McKenna friends, eager to meet with Lord Shiva again, but while I was preparing to meet the Godhead, my girlfriend was battling with demons instead. Depression, anxiety, pink pills in her head. Leave me, don't love me, I hate you, she said, and for the first lifetime in my life, I felt dread as I felt our hearts pull apart, thread by thread. Well, fuck that, said my friends. Hell, come with us. Jump on our Technicolored school bus. Beelzebus, man, it's the bus from hell. And here, how to hit it, that dope that you smell. You'll have the best time that you've ever had, though. We're off to the Burning Man Festival in Nevada. <laughs> Craziest art festival in the whole world. Blow your mind, man. Meet some new girls. So get out of your funk. Say goodbye to your lethargy. Come burn a four-story neon man in effigy. <laughs> So without hesitation, I packed up some fruit. Wait, I packed up my loot, packed up my purple velour octopus suit, <laughs> went out to the desert and just blew my mind. Saw some crazy art sculptures. I could barely define a mountain of pianos, flaming TVs, an ice sculpture built in 100 degrees. Learned the word techno pagan while I was there, sort of hippie meets cyberspace, devil may care. Got high in the chaos, smoke grass, and got higher. Filled out an application to be the next Messiah. <laughs> and I have no idea what I put on that damn form, but it must have been something good, sure. Because, <laughs> like, sure is forewarned. Because after the neon lit man burned down, <laughs> electricity's nothing, fire's around. The, uh, the Messiah judges came up and said, Cousin, your application's been chosen out of more than a dozen. So bring the world peace, prosperity, and joy. And had me a little sweet Buddha toy. <laughs> With little toy hands, holding coffee and phone. Wide away from spreading enlightenment from home. <laughs> On the way back, we stopped off in Reno, playing slots in Zid's gas station casino. I was playing with money an old woman had given me, because it's easier to win with other people's money, she told me. So I was popping my quarters and squeaking my Buddha until my friend Crash came up and said, Dude, uh, there's a guy in the parking lot wants to score weed and he's willing to trade for dimethyltryptamine. Well, uh, I don't believe in coincidences, friend, because these things are memes and the coincidence are the end. So I said, Cat, Crash, grab him, and, grab him and hold him. I'll go get my pot. Play my last quarter and hit the jackpot. <laughs> Back in California, not sure where to begin, I knew it was time to break up with my girlfriend, but before I could talk of our love dissipating, the polygamous nature of octopus mating, <laughs> <laughs> she turned my head to the side and said, oh my god, the earring she'd given me five years ago was gone. She said our goodbyes that same afternoon and went to my friend's place, we all called the moon, where freaks Geeks and computer, freaks computers and geeks offered healing underneath black lit neon body prints on the ceiling. So I stretched into yoga under the stars, traded some sushi for a massage, laid myself down in the empty bathtub, gave praises to Gaia, the heavens above, and around me my friends, they all came and huddled, the veritable crew for my space shuttle. Embrace the base pipe just like before. Hit that membrane on hit number four. Burst, or burst through the membrane on hit number four. And the gods there said, it's cool that you scored, but you'll die if you take DMT anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, I said, fine by me and astrally incarnated as the muse, poetry. A mountainous serpent, a venom snake with a mouthful of venom just ready to make the almighty word bend to my will. My tail coiled beneath me to spring for the kill. 
And I stayed there for seconds, for lifetimes, for hours, until I thought, hey, I should test my new powers. Invoked them by speaking aloud the word love. And began to descend, tail first, to the bathtub. Woke up in that tub and opened my eyes. The third one is massive, as wide as the sky. And I was reborn, so to no one's surprise, I pissed myself and started to cry. But now I had powers, flesh and fire, believed that humans are rarefied creatures indeed. So I decided to let my friends in on my trip, and I did that by saying, uh, I am not Vishnu or Buddha or Shiva. I am the reincarnated muse of the poet John Muir and the, wait, hang on. I am not Buddha or Vishnu or Shiva. I am the re uh, I am the incarnation of the muse poetry. And poetry, I am your master and slave. And if you'll but love me, I'll be your gentleman. So after that, I quit to teach skiing. <laughs> <laughs> and quit to write poetry. A good enough reason. Had a dream that an African sorceress friend found a crystal of me at the Egyptian pyramids. Amethyst, which she tied up in my dreads and said it was an egg or a, a dragon or an ethereal being. Woke up and quit my job teaching skiing. <laughs> but just before buying my tickets to Cairo, blood spattered from 48 tourists on hieroglyphics. Horrific how those people died. Gunned down in Luxor with no place to hide in the group that made their name with that coup said they're sorry they killed no Americans or Jews. Well, that's me, Baba G, but I ain't afraid, see, to die on my way to fulfilling my destiny. Woke up the next morning, uh, bought tickets the very next morning, and uh, something. <laughs> and tickets were cheap on Massacre Morning. <laughs> my third day in Cairo, I dreamed it again, climbing the pyramids, finding the gem. Only this time I knew exactly the place. Got out of bed with a smile on my face, rode out to Shepherd with a uh, chartered a horse and enacted that dream. Rode out to Shepherd on a full head of steam, the centerpiece of the grouping of three, the one that's always been calling to me. And as the cops shouted stop from below, I climbed where no rational person would go. And all of a sudden, I was a 12 year old boy searching for mystery, adventure, and joy. And about halfway up, I stopped and looked down. And between ancient stones, I saw something round, just out of reach. So I reached for my pen, a nudge made it budge, so I trotted again. And just as the officers were mounting the stairs, I birthed that object out of its lair. It's purple and clear, half the size of my fist. A glittering chunk of pure 